my story, um, as far as my adoption, um, I think it's, it's a pretty interesting story, I guess, to me. I will say that it definitely has a huge place in my heart because it is unfortunate that black kids are the last ones to be adopted. We're always overlooked. And then we age out of the system and then we end up with nowhere to go and we end up in um, feeling less of our lives than we should. Um, my story, uh, my mother gave me up from ad for adoption. She was actually from the New York area. And so she traveled all the way to Tennessee to basically leave me. Um, and I went through probably three, I was in an orphanage for about almost a year. And then I went to three different foster homes before um, my beautiful mama and daddy, Joyce and Joe Boy. I'm sure you've heard Joe Boy on the show because DL calls him John Boy all the time. But anyway, um, they adopted me when I was about three and a half, four years old. And uh, they also adopted uh, my brother. Well, not my birth brother, but they adopted a boy prior to me and my mom wanted a girl. So that's how I ended up there. And so um, I was raised on a farm in a small country town called Udawa, Tennessee. So I grew up with cows and chickens and horses and all of that. I was never allowed to go to the city. Um, but it was an amazing thing for me to be adopted because again, the odds and the chances of you uh, being adopted, being black, were slim to none. Uh, and the funny thing is the nurse told my mother that she didn't want me. She should choose someone else. And um, yeah, she really said that. And so it was actually my mother's mother who said, no, we, we want her. And they kept saying, well, you can, you can do better. And it was because I was very standoffish I didn't want anyone picking me up. And I guess, you know, because my adopted mother, she had lost her daughter. She had lost, she had had a stillborn. And so uh, they felt that my mom had been through enough uh, trauma and didn't want her to have a little girl that didn't want to be held. And so um, thank God that my grandmother had the foresight to say, no, but there's something about that little girl. And so they took me home and, um, yeah, I had a fantastic life. And then years later, um, I went on a search for my birth parents. And uh, it took 15 years and a gazillion letters. And this is a true story, very true story. In the state of Tennessee, they have what they call closed adoption files, meaning that the person who gives a child up for adoption has a right to anonymity. And so therefore, the, the, seal, the seal can never be broken. There was a group of people called the right to knowers who were a group of people who had been adopted and they were like, we deserve to know who our families are. We deserve to know about our birth history because, you know, for medical reasons and obviously you don't want to wind up marrying your brother and be like, oh my God, I married my brother because I didn't know. And so for three days, the law in Tennessee was overturned. And during that time, my letter was one of less than 300 that got through. And then they quickly changed the rules back, changed the law over again and made it a closed state. So my letter got through. I was one of a very few people lucky enough to get my adoption files. And so with the help of that information in the files and a private investigator, I found out that my mother was Native American. She lived in a, a, on an Indian reservation in New York called Shinnecock. And um, so I went looking for her and I was like, boop, 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 ta-da! <laughs> so I know that's so crazy, but that's a true story.